What's the price of success? Your whole career. You'd be pretty lonely if all you had was money. Well, thanks again for a, another session of nothing. I mean, seriously. What do I pay you for? To state the obvious? I'm sorry, you feel that way, Mark. I tell you, every time we meet, if you don't open up to me, there's only so much progress we're going to make. What more do you want to hear? I want to hear, in your own words, why she left. No vague expressions, no anger, no insults. I want to hear, in your honest words, why. Why did Natalia leave you? Looks like we're about to run over time, and I know how much you like to tack that onto my Mark, bill. don't worry about it. It's not about the money. That's first. We're so close, please. Mark, sit down. It's not safe to drive in these conditions, and we have nothing but time. Mark, please. I guess I'll never understand the mind of a woman. Natalia and I were so happy when I was broke, living in a studio in a shithole part of town. She'd come over at the time she was still living with her parents, so... Just being at my apartment was a thrill, I guess. Order pizza, watch movies. Hell, I remember one night the power went out during this tropical storm, which meant my heat went out. That was the best night of our lives. With the shared blanket and the ambient sound of the tropical storm. Kind of like the storm that's coming in. Tonight's storm is definitely going to be one for the books. I'm glad you made it. I'm surprised you didn't cancel. The reason I'm so adamant about you opening up tonight is because I've been practicing a new alternative technique. New tricks, huh? Sounds exciting. It's aroma psychotherapy. It's been around for thousands of years but it's something that I began to take on within the last year or so for my clients who, well, for the ones that have a hard time opening up. So tell me, aroma psychotherapy will help me forget how broken inside I am. Natalia really did a number on me. Well, yeah, so far it's had a 99% success rate for my clients that have tried it. But 99, why not 100? I prefer to say 99. It's my way of knocking on wood. We'll see. Now take a deep breath with me. Nice and slow. Start from the top. What led to Natalia leaving you? So, after the broke days, I finally got a good paying job. Head of marketing at a prestigious tactical gear company. You know, boots, pants, bags. Materials for prepping. 90 a year if you had in commission. Very nice. Is that when you got your new home? Yep. It was no mansion, but Natalia thought it would be smart if we started small and saved our money. I was working around the clock all the time, and it was as if the minute we moved into that place, something died between us. Elaborate. Well, in the old place, if I was busy and she had nothing to do, she would find ways to entertain herself until I got back from work. Watch a movie called Friends, work out. In the new place, she would just hang around all depressed as if she had nothing to live for until I got there. And why the sudden change? That's the million dollar question there. I was so wrapped up with work, I didn't realize what the real problem was. 
Now it's obvious. Yeah. She was cheating until the time we moved into the new place. And how did you come to that conclusion? The guy she got with after me was someone she knew the whole time. Pastor Reynolds from our old church in the old town. We had a miscarriage during the broke days. Found out she wasn't able to have kids. Not that we were trying to have a child, but to have that taken away from us was really hard. Pastor Reynolds was the only one who could talk sense into Natalia. Long story short, I found out they were spending way too much time together, so I put an end to it. I guess I should have never left that door open for that. Well, some doors aren't left open, they're broken into. And that's not your fault. What would you say was the cause of your insecurity? When their cries became laughter. I'd come home and see the two of them living it up, drinking while the Bible's laying on the table. I looked at him, I said, Pastor, thank you for healing my wife. Now we're done here. And how did Natalia feel about that? I never asked. So we moved into the new place. She's sad all the time. And I'm working around the clock, like I said before. One day she's sitting there eating her toast with butter like she does. And she puts it down and says something tastes different. I ask her, what do you mean something tastes different? It's bread and butter. She looks back at me and says, I want a divorce. I was dumb enough to think the money was enough to make me happy, so I just let her go. Smoothly. Less than a year after that, I find out she's living back in her hometown and she's married to Pastor Reynolds. Well, did you ever stop to consider that maybe she felt like she lost everything? child, the guidance of the pastor, her hometown. I mean, maybe she felt like she gave up everything for you, but got nothing in return. You did say you spent long hours at work and had very little energy to give to her. Everything I did was to give her the life she wanted. She pushed me to be bigger more successful, wealthier, and I get punished for it. Can you believe I lost my business because of them? I know what she did. Your business? How can that be the case? After we moved into the new place, I taught her the ins and outs of the marketing I was doing. The gear, the customers, how to dominate that lane. Was she into marketing as well? She wanted to go to school for it after the miscarriage. Anyway, about a year after the divorce, I, my customers from our old town, which was about 60% of my clients, they just start dropping like flies. Explain. They went ghost. No more sales, no more emails. After a couple months of declining sales, I go on Facebook and start snooping around. Her and her new husband, Pastor Reynolds, start a new and apparently improved version of my company. They snagged all my customers. Well, how is that even possible? I guess Pastor Reynolds had more money to put into it. Add to that is the fact that he's like a celebrity in that town. Well, after you showed her the ropes, I'd say that's grounds for a lawsuit. No. I'm way past a lawsuit at this point. If there was one thing you could say to Natalia right now, what would it be? You're despicable. A disloyal, two-timing slut. You took everything from me. 
Hope you're happy to know I'm back to phase one. Studio apartment, TV dinners, just the way you met me. Well, Mark, I think that the only way for you to move on is for you to do something about this. No, I don't sue. Besides, he, I'd probably lose with all the resources that man has. I'm not talking about a lawsuit, Mark. A few months back, you mentioned suicidal thoughts. I did. What are you getting at? I told you that was a one-time thought. Do you still have the gun? Natalia took everything away from you. Maybe it's time that you take everything away from her. So that's it. This is how it ends. Did you ever even love me? Fuck you! Shoot me! Get it over with! I don't want to be here. Did you ever love me? If you could say one thing to Natalia right now, what would it be? I understand. And tell me, what exactly do you understand? It's out of my control. What is out of your control? Love. Everything I expected didn't work out. I'm okay. Well, Mark, I think we hit a milestone today. <laughs>